Namaste. Continuing with the infertility topic, myself, Dr. Vishwesh, Associate Professor in the Department of Prasuti Tantra in Banaras Hindu University. In case of infertility, a detailed case history and examination is very important prior to investigation. The exact age of the patient, the period of active sexual life, frequency of sexual intercourse, history of previous pregnancy or previous abortion, that must be considered. Any positive history of genital infections, mumps, tuberculosis or uncontrolled diabetes mellitus that is also considered because they are important reasons for infertility. Chronic respiratory illness or the conditions like the bronchiectasis must be considered to rule out the disease conditions like the Young syndrome or ciliary dyskinesia. Chronic alcohol usage or tobacco usage that must be considered in history taking because they are considered as one of the important reasons for the poor semen picture. The patient is also investigated for any chronic debilitating disorders to rule out chronic drug abuse or the hydrogenic reasons for poor semen picture. Any surgical history, especially the surgery of the hernia that must be considered to rule out the possibility of the obstructive causes of infertility. After the detailed history, the genital examination is important. The exact size of the penis, the state of the scrotum, color and rugosity of the scrotal sac, any visible swelling in the scrotal area like the hernia or varicocele, any local lymphadenopathy, all this must be seen in case of inspection. Genital palpation is done for the presence of any tenderness or the consistency assessment and any swelling present in the testicular area and to assess the exact size and volume of the testis. The genital palpation is important and the assessment of the testicular volume is done in comparison with the orchidometer. The ideal volume of the testis is approximately 15 to 20 ml and if there is reduction in the size then one must suspect either the chronic infection of the genital tract or that may lead to the atrophic changes in that or chromosomal abnormalities. One may also find a mass or lump in the genital area like in case of spermatocele or epidermal cyst or in case of hydrocele or varicocele. There may be local lymphadenopathy also and sometimes if there is acute infection then there may be swelling in the genital area or testicle may be tender there may be increased local temperature, hyperemic changes may be seen. So for this one must examine the genital area. In case of cryptoarchoidism, it can be diagnosed during the clinical examination. Either the absence of one or both the testicle in the scrotal sac confirm the diagnosis. It can be finally concluded with either ultrasound or MRI scan. So the Patients with the cryptoarchidism usually have semen poor picture either in the form of low motility and low sperm count. If undescended testis is not diagnosed in the early childhood, then in adulthood it may change into malignant change. The other complication of undescended testis untreated is at times it may get torsion and that may create an acute condition. And there is also chances of developing hernia in a patient who is already having undescended testis. One more finding in the clinical examination is hypospadias. This is a congenital birth defect or structural abnormality that is present in the urethra. Instead of glans penis, the urethra will be having opening in the dorsum of the penis. So that may lead to the coital abnormalities or along with that sometimes these type of the patients are having poor semen qualities. There is also in difficulty in depositing the semen in the female genital tract. One more clinical entity that is varicocele that can be clearly seen in case of genital examination or inspection and it can be confirmed with palpation. So the tortuous pampiform venous plexus are seen in case of inspection and in palpation one can feel the bag of worms in the scrotal palpation. So that is one important reason for the low motility and change in the sperm count. In varicocele, the stasis of the blood 
leads to increased temperature which is not ideal for spermatogenesis as stasis increases there will be more testicular pressure this hampers the blood supply and leads to testicular hypoxia the hypoxia leads to poor sperm production and maturation of the spermatozoa and it also alters the sperm motility so that's why the clear attention must be given for the presence of varicose vein in clinical examination routine blood investigations must be done as a baseline investigation in infertility so any of the infective condition that can be diagnosed that may also present in case of genital area urine routine examination urine microscopic examination must be done for the diagnosis of the retrograde ejaculation so one must go with a post coital urine examination the presence of spermatozoa in the urine that is suggestive of retrograde ejaculation especially those patients who are having the prostatic complaints the routine and the particular investigation for the diabetes mellitus must be done because it is considered as one of the important reason for infertility erectile dysfunction or poor sample of the semen so if the patient is having any change in blood sugar level then one must go for glycosylated hemoglobin and other investigations semen analysis is the important investigation in infertility it is the first investigation in infertility for this the sample must be collected by the method of masturbation or by the method of coitus interruptus the sample must be collected in a wide mouth glass container and as soon as possible they should be subjected to investigation at least between 2 hours the sample must not be collected in any of the rubber container like the latex condom or any plastic container there should be at least 3 days abstinence for the sample collection if the sample is collected without abstinence that may lead to the abnormal report in the form of either oligospermia or decreased motility if the period of abstinence is more then that may also lead to the abnormal report that is in the form of either more dead spermatozoa or decreased motility that's why the appropriate timing and early examination is very important for a normal semen report what are the normal parameters of normal semen analysis so for each ejaculation at least there should be 2 ml of the sample and the ph of the semen sample must be between 7.2 to 7.8 the sample viscosity must be within normal that is less than 3 and the concentration of the spermatozoa in the semen is 20 million per ml at least 20 million per ml and total sperm count per ejaculation should be at least more than 40 million per ejaculation if we consider the motility of the spermatozoa at least 75% of the spermatozoa must be motile out of that 45 to 50% of spermatozoa must have active linear motility at least 14% or more spermatozoa must have normal structural form the leucocytes must not be more than 1 million per ml the immature cells or the round cells must not be more than 5 million per ml the fructose content of the spermatozoa must be within normal and there should not be any undue agglutination in case of semen analysis so in case of semen analysis under physical examination we consider volume the liquefaction time the viscosity of the semen fructose content in semen ph of the semen and in case of microscopic examination we look into the motility of spermatozoa total spermatozoa in ejaculation the spermatozoa count the morphology of the spermatozoa and the number of wbcs the immature spermatozoa so all this comes under the heading of microscopic examination so in case of semen analysis some may have total aspermia that is patient may not get the sample so that is in case of patients those who are having spinal cord abnormalities 
or in case of retrograde ejaculation the patient may not have the volume in ejaculation or failure for the emission of the semen so that is the first condition aspermia the next common abnormality is the low count that is called as oligospermia or oligozoospermia where the count is less than 15 million per ml so the reason is either any of the cytotoxic drugs chronic alcoholism excessive cigarette smoking any local infection of the genital tract uncontrolled diabetes mellitus or the obstructive causes of the reproductive organs so that all may lead to the oligospermia the azoospermia that is a condition where no spermatozoa is seen in the semen so either it may be an obstructive condition or it may be a non obstructive condition in the obstructive condition either the infection in the epididymal system or vas deferens or in case of the cystic fibrosis disease condition or in case of trauma to the reproductive area or in case of hernia surgery so that may lead to the obstructive regions in case of the semen transport system and the patient may be totally azoospermic the non obstructive reason for total azoospermia is the karyotype abnormalities or exposure to the radiation or cytotoxin drugs administration so that may totally disturb the reproductive system and the patient may be totally azoospermic the asthenospermia or a weak spermatozoal motility that is seen in case of patients with varicocele because of the stasis the motility is reduced and most commonly seen in case of thyroid dysfunction either hyperthyroidism or hypothyroidism both may present in the form of asthenospermia or low motility the other reasons for the low motility is the local infections or prostate abnormalities or the prostatitis or the increased viscosity of the semen so that is the reason for weak motility the leucospermia or the excessive wbc in the semen that is mainly due to the infective conditions either the gonococcal infection or tuberculosis or epididymitis or orchitis that may lead to the wbc in the semen picture then the teratospermia or the abnormal form of the spermatozoa that is mainly seen in diabetes mellitus patients with history of alcoholism patient with a history of cigarette and patient with chronic debilitating disorders so they have more teratospermia in compared to normal spermatozoa next what are the hormonal in- investigations that is to be done in case of infertility in case of male infertility the fsh lh estimation and the serum testosterone this is the base investigation and serum prolactin level must be assessed and the thyroid function assessment must be done t30 40sh serum prolactin serum testosterone and fsh and lh these are the important hormonal in- investigation that is to be done in case of male infertility the spermatogenesis is mainly dependent upon the follicle stimulating hormone and which is governed by the gnrh and the pituitary the testosterone level is mainly the feedback mechanism that controls the gnrh stimulation so the normal level of the testosterone that will give the negative feedback mechanism to the hypothalamus pituitary axis and there will be pulsatile manner secretion of fsh and lh in patients with a primary testicular failure the testosterone level is either normal or subnormal but the level of the fsh and the lh is raised in case of this condition whereas in case of hypogonadotrophic hypogonadism both fsh lh is in low level as well as testosterone is also in low level because it is a central cause but in case of isolated spermatogenic failure in that only the fsh is raised whereas lh and the testosterone level is within normal limits the ideal time for the sampling for the testosterone estimation is early morning hours and the isolated high level of the fsh is seen in case of seminiferous tubule damage and there the patient may have abnormal semen picture the isolated level of high level of the lh is seen in case of leydig cell dysfunction or damage 
where there will be low level of the testosterone is noted. In case of primary hypogonadism or primary testicular failure, the pathology is in testis. Here the testosterone level is low. To stimulate the testis, there will be more level of the FSH and LH as well as GnRH. Whereas in secondary hypogonadism, here the problem is in hypothalamus and pituitary and there will be low level of the GnRH, low level of FSH, LH that leads to low level of the testosterone production in the testis. Assessment of the thyroid function is very important in infertility as both hyperthyroidism as well as hypothyroidism may lead to infertility both in male as well as female. In case of female that will lead into anovulation, poor implantation, recurrent pregnancy loss whereas in male the poor thyroid function that will lead into either coital problems such as the erectile dysfunction or that may lead into the abnormal cells that is in the form of teratospermia or weak motility in the form of asthenospermia. So the normalcy of the thyroid is very important for a successful pregnancy as well as conception and the maintenance of pregnancy. Excessive prolactin level in the body is the reason for infertility both in male as well as female. In case of male, the hyperprolactinemia leads to low level of the testosterone and it decreases the production of the spermatozoa and it decreases the motility of the spermatozoa. In case of female, that leads to the low level of the FSH and LH that leads to irregular cycles and anovulation. So thus, the hyperprolactinemia is a main reason for infertility in female as well as in male patients. Testicular biopsy is an invasive procedure to differentiate between obstructive and non-obstructive type of azospermic conditions. The obstructive type of azospermic conditions is as a result of either the obstruction may be due to surgery or it may be due to infection like gonococcal or tubercular infection or it may be as a result of cystic fibrosis or any of the cystic diseases of the epididymis or the ductal system. The non-obstructive type of azospermia is mainly due to the testicular damage or atrophic changes in the testis. Either it may be due to radiotherapy or it may be due to cytotoxic drugs or may be due to the karyotyping abnormality or congenital anomalies like the serotonin cell only conditions. So they may be differentiated with the help of testicular biopsy. So with the help of microsurgery or due to fine needle aspiration or by open method, one may collect the sample from the testicle and this reveals what exactly the reason for absence of spermatozoa in the semen, whether the testis is not in a position to produce the spermatozoa or the function of the testis is normal but the transport system is abnormal. So to differentiate this, the testicular biopsy is done. The transrectal ultrasound is preferred to diagnose the abnormalities of the seminal vesicles or prostate or the ductal system as this route gives better image of the reproductive organs. So that's why in case of infertility, transrectal ultrasound is preferred when you are suspecting any of the ductal system abnormalities or the abnormalities of the vesicle or the prostate. The transrectal ultrasound is done in a patient with normal testicular volume, but they are having either oligospermia or azospermia. So rule out the ejaculatory ductal abnormalities or prostatic abnormalities, the transrectal ultrasound is preferred. Or those patients, those who are having abnormal perrectal finding, either enlargement of prostate or any of the abnormal finding if it is seen in case of adjacent to the structures of prostate then one must go with the transrectal ultrasound. The testicular biopsy and the karyotype analysis are the investigations in the later part of the infertility assessment. The patients those who are azospermic and the patients those who are having high level of the FSH then to confirm the chromosomal abnormalities, the patients are subjected to karyotyping. 
So the Klinefelter syndrome is the commonest reason for abnormal semen picture in case of male infertility. The patients of Klinefelter syndrome, they are having tall stature, long bones. The muscle tone is poor, the IQ level is low. They are having poor secondary male sexual characters. The testicular volume is less, they may have gynecomastia. They have the wide hip or there will be feminine appearance in case of pelvic area. And the patient may have either total absence of spermatozoa or they may have few number of spermatozoa. The two tests are advised for anti-sperm antibodies. The first one is agglutination reaction assay. The second one is immunobid binding assay. So these are the two tests that are helpful in diagnosing the cases of anti-sperm antibodies. That either they may be agglutinating or they may be totally immobilizing the spermatozoa. The presence of antibodies against the spermatozoa, they are having their adverse effect over the sperm motility as well as the life of the spermatozoa. They may lead to the death of the spermatozoa that is necrospermia or they may lead to the asthenospermia that is weak motility. They may also clump the spermatozoa together or they may hinder the mobility of the spermatozoa in the female genital tract. So they may prevent the ascending of spermatozoa through the cervical area if that is present in the cervical mucus.